how to handle a narcissist at work. Narcissists appear in many different arenas. Commonly, people find narcissists in a romantic ensnarement or a familial one. However, our kind also appear in social groups, as neighbours, as customers or clients, as club members and in society as a whole. We also frequently appear at work. A common reason given to failing to implement total no-contact is the issue of working with a narcissist. The attempt to escape the nightmare of ensnarement is viewed as unachievable and increases the concern, fear and anxiety for the victim. Plagued by concerns about losing their job, being made a scapegoat, seen as a troublemaker, being denied opportunities and promotions, many people continue to work for, with and alongside narcissists with all the attendant problems which arise from this. Narcissists are frequently found in the workplace. It is an environment that caters to us, particularly those that are able to get into some position of authority or power. A prime place for the narcissist to assert control over other people, to bully, to persuade, to blackmail, to promise, gain, to future fake. It's an environment which enables us to draw fuel from many people, colleagues who are non-intimate secondary sources, clients, suppliers, who may be non-intimate secondary sources or non-intimate tertiary sources. But there is a multitude of people within which we can draw fuel from. Character trait acquisition is common. It's an environment where your success becomes the success of the narcissist. Your achievements are commandeered and held out as those of the narcissist. The narcissist takes credit for other people's work, other people's achievements. The narcissist rejects accountability by dumping work on other people, going missing when the chips are down, shirking work. In other instances, is an opportunity for the narcissist to shine, working hard, trampling on others, climbing the greasy pole and pulling people above them off it and stamping on those beneath them. Of course, it provides us with residual benefits, the most obvious being the opportunity to earn and earn more, to get our hands on bonuses at the expense of other people. In some instances, the criminal act of stealing from an employer, stealing from colleagues, it provides the residual benefit of a facade, access to information, access to opportunities, access to status as a consequence of climbing the corporate ladder. The work environment is festooned with narcissists and provides us with ample opportunity to obtain the prime aims. And for those of you that have found yourself involved with a colleague or boss who is a narcissist, it makes your life a misery. You invariably dread turning up to work. You become worn down with the demands that are made upon you. Treading on the proverbial eggshells, you never know what's going to happen next. Unsure of how to deal with it. Of course, no contact is the standard and most appropriate response. But not everybody is able to leave their employment. And of course, with the current situation, with the economies of the world being adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, finding alternative work is often harder than it used to be. Furthermore, thoughts of why should I leave a job that I otherwise enjoy were it not for this individual? Or what I do is highly specialised. It would mean uplifting my family to move somewhere else to pursue an alternative job. And whilst, of course, consideration should always be given to no contact and basically leaving and working elsewhere, because that will cure the problem, it is not something that can necessarily be immediately done, and many people even struggle with countenancing such an idea, regarding it as unfair, 
inappropriate and not something that they can do. What then can you do where you're ensnared with a narcissist at work? How can you handle that narcissist? Well, fortunately for you, as a consequence of my unrivaled expertise and insight into narcissists generally, and of course those that I have interacted with and observed in working environments, the way that they have operated, the way that they behave with regard to their victims, I am able to provide you with added insight with regard to the field of narcissists and narcissism, and I have developed a comprehensive assistance package which addresses a wide range of matters in an easy-to-understand manner, with practical advice and tips which have been successfully used by individuals working with narcissists, all based upon my unrivaled understanding. The assistance package, which you can access using the link in the video description, covers the following areas for you. Handling a workplace narcissist as part of your no-contact regime. Dealing with the issue of scapegoating. Common manipulations that the narcissist will use in the workplace and how you can counter them. Whether to complain about the narcissist's treatment of you, and if so, who do you complain to, and how do you do it. How to handle the issue of requiring a reference where a narcissist is involved. Handling adverse appraisal outcomes given by a narcissist. How to address communication with the narcissist within the workplace setting. How to handle harassment issues arising from the narcissist's behaviour. How to deal with a narcissist who is a peer. How to handle a narcissist who is a subordinate to you. Plus, much more groundbreaking and supportive information. This is what one user of, amongst many satisfied users, had to state about this assistance package. Although I had read books and articles about narcissists at work, they failed to provide the insider knowledge and practical guidance that I am used to receiving from Mr. Tudor. I find this material an outstanding resource of superior knowledge, quality and assistance for survivors of narcissistic abuse in the workplace. It consists of a set of audio files aimed at everyone who feels unsure and seeks expert advice on how to manage difficult situations where there is a mid-range narcissist or a lesser narcissist certain control. It's also relevant to anyone who is looking for a job and may have come across narcissists as a work colleague, boss or subordinate in the future. Part 1 explains the foundation of the narcissist's behaviour, being aware of the three forms of interactions and probable outcomes, and that is fundamental to enable you to control your behaviour when interacting with the narcissist. I use this knowledge in different contexts. Part 2 is about the impact the narcissist has on us and how we can respond. Mr. Tudor guides us in order to assess our own situation and then decide how to proceed. I found this immensely helpful. Part 3 deals with different problems we may encounter at work, such as raising a grievance, including its pros and cons, communicating with the narcissist, obtaining a reference, including when and how to do it, and also handling an unfair negative appraisal. Part 4 focuses on how to handle the subordinate narcissist, the peer narcissist and the boss narcissist. This part also addresses harassment, scapegoating and common manipulations used at work. Understanding how the narcissist perceives their environment and other people has helped me to reduce my confusion and anxiety. And that review was provided by EB. Understand, this assistance package does not cover the romantic involvement with the narcissist. That situation should be involved through an audio consultation. This assistance package, which you will receive in four Detailed audio files will give you comprehensive information which you can access in your own time and your own pace to ensure that you are able to deal and handle with a workplace narcissist in a non-romantic situation. If you want to read more testimonials about this, go to narcsite.com, go to the Prime Packages in the menu bar and click on Handling the Narcissist at Work and you will find a range of testimonials from other satisfied users. To overcome and handle the narcissist at work, use the link in the menu bar. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.